Welcome to another chandelier video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a completely different chandelier. We're going to be building a different chandelier. This chandelier is going to have six arms. It's going to hang from the great hall of your doll's house, and it's going to look like a traditional chandelier. But of course, it's going to be made out of copper pipes and bits of brass and things that we can find in our local vicinity. So it doesn't have to look exactly like this one. This one also has 3D printed parts and some LEDs, but it can be as involved as you would like it to be. This is really just a proof of concept, inspirational uh, content really, just to sort of show you that this is possible. It's possible to do this at home using your own tools. Nothing special is really required here. It's just simply bent copper pipe and some LEDs. So, the first thing I notice when I put this in place is that it actually makes my doll's house look a little bit shabby. So I realise that I need to do this up. I need to put some uh, new stairs in, perhaps. I need to do some other things. But as you can see, it's there, stuck to the roof, to, to the uh, ceiling rows with a magnet. And it's designed in a way that can be removed and perhaps replaced back into another room or the same room. They're, they're interchangeable. And I did it like this because I've got children and they tend to come into the, the house, they tend to play and pull things off and uh, cause problems. So anyway, let's get straight to it and start building this thing. First thing we need to do is source the materials. So if you haven't already seen it, look back at the video which deals with sourcing materials. This particular pipe was found in my garden and it was from a previous project. This is what we made last time and this is the beginning of what we're going to make this time. So the last time it was uh, this little side wall chandelier thing that we made and that was copper pipe soldered and electroplated and now we're going to be making something very similar using the skills we learned from that one and putting it to this one so the first thing I've done is cut a piece of uh, eight millimeter copper pipe and I've sectioned it off so that I have an equal amount of six arms so those little markings are spaced in four millimeter gaps so it's roughly it's not it's not precision or anything this is rough marking. So here I am cutting the marks out and the reason I'm cutting the marks out is because I need to drill holes, holes for each of these arms. Now I'm not going to use a pillar drill or anything special, I'm just going to put this in a vise and I'm going to use my hobby drill which is the equivalent of any drill really isn't it? So I'm just going to drill at the bottom of those lines and there we have it. That's what we get when we've done that. Now the reason I've sliced into that is so that I can open this up like a flower later on so I can I can place something else inside. It'll all become apparent. Right, I've got a brass lump here. Now it's come from an old clock. It's just a piece of junk so I'm sanding it down to the right size to fit this. And I'm going to solder it together. But before we do that I'm just going to have a look to see if I can imagine what these arms are going to look like because it's always good to try and use your imagination before these things actually become permanent um, because changes might need to be made along the way as you're doing it. So I'm putting my flux onto the brass part and I've got a piece of solder already laying on top of them and for this one because the brass part is a bit thick, a bit chunky, I'm going to use the big blowtorch. It's just a normal blowtorch, uh, butane torch. And I just need a bit more heat on that, just to get that solder into places where it may not go with a, with a small creme brulee torch. And this is quite hot, so I'll need to leave it for a, a little bit of time. But as you can see, it's, it's already... Ouch! Ouch, that is a bit warm but it's not too warm. I think a lot of the heat went into that little vise. Now this is the bit you're probably all interested in. It's the pipe bending bit. Now, this is the 3D printed part that I use now for bending pipes. I think it's a lot better than the old version in the old 
uh, video in the video about the sidewall chandelier. I think this makes things a little bit easier. So that's the kind of shape that we should get from this um, pipe bender. And of course the pipe bender is available to download for free if you want to do that. So I've got six of these things to make and they have to be roughly the same. Each one has to be very similar. I mean there's no real measurements or anything with this. It's all eyeballing and guesswork because it, it there's no plans, there's no design, it's just off the cuff, you know, ad hoc. Um, the only thing that's actually been designed is the pipe bender. So we'll uh, stick the pipe in there until it reaches the end. I, I use my finger to gauge that. And then the idea is to bend this down with that little notch there pushed all the way out, all the way down. So I can bend it, bend the pipe all the way straight flat like that. I need pliers just to make sure that the, the pipe is really nice and as, as flat as can be there. Uh, it doesn't have to be pliers, you can use a piece of wood or anything. I'm just using whatever's at hand. I mean, the pipe is quite soft too. It's it's the microbore pipe that we got from eBay. And, uh, it's a bit awkward to video this and do this at the same time. I need an extra hand, really. I mean, you you probably will find this a lot easier than than I am. Yeah. Once you've got it in and you think it's right, then lift up that little central piece, the notch, push it up, and then bend the pipe back the way it came around to form that U-bend. And there we are, that's basically it. Um, you could use the pliers and, and get it nice and tight, nice and flat if you want, uh, because when you bend it by hand, you can't always get as close as you, you might like. But... It's really easy to do, and that's all it is. It's just that. Now, I'm going to cut the end off here with the um, diamond cutting burr. It's just the multi-tool thing. The uh, I think a lot of people call them Dremels, but really they're rotary, rotary tools, aren't they? So I've made a few, and this is what it kind of looks like. And as you can see, I've flowered the end there, spread them open, because something else is going to go in there, and I need to feed some wires into this later. So at the moment I'm just concentrating on trying to balance these little things onto this. I need to balance them because I need to solder these in place. And that, that might be tricky. But I think it's doable. I'm not going to worry too much at the moment about how rough these things are. How, how the, uh, the holes are filled in with burr from cutting. It's not really important at this stage. I think mean, if we can get the form together so that we can roughly see what this thing should look like, uh, then then we're halfway there. Now I'm going to cut half of this pipe. So I'm going to sand half of that pipe down to the marker level that I've, I've shown you there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want a little hook on the inside to hook these onto the onto the main shaft of the body. Because solder isn't really that strong, so it needs it needs something else just to make sure that this is going to be quite strong. And before I solder these things in, I am going to need to deburr these. So I'm, I'm using a dental pick here, and I'm just making sure that the hole into the pipe is open and accessible. Because at some stage in the next uh, short time I'm going to be filling that with wire I'm going to be feeding a wire through that and because the pipe's bent it's going to be a little bit hard to get the wire through especially two wires because it's actually going to be two wires per arm so as you can see I've bent down the uh, the parts on those arms I'm going to do this now I'm going to so I just feed it in And then 
Just push it down with a, a screwdriver or some kind of implement. As you can see there. So I'm, I'm using a needle nose pliers for this. So it doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be roughly, roughly right. Because these things, they're never going to be perfect. So don't worry about trying to achieve perfection. It's better just to get it done um, to the standard that you're, you're going to be able to produce. As you can see, I've managed to balance them all out there carefully, which is a bit tedious, but it didn't take that long, so I've cleaned the tubes out and I've balanced them. Now I want to paint them with this um, flux. I just want to paint each of the joints where the solder will sit with this soldering flux. And I need to be a little bit careful because I don't want any of these arms to move out of place and uh, sit in a, in a weird way, which of course they will do. I, I'm, I am going to knock them and they are going. You see that just happened there and it, and it does happen. But I just try to be as careful as possible uh, and just, just put it where I think I'm going to need it. Now it can take some time to do this and make sure you don't get the, the flux onto your fingers and clothes and things. Just be aware that it, it, it can be corrosive. It's not super dangerous, but it, it's not nice stuff. So there we go. I've soldered most of these and I'm just going to finish off by uh, doing this one. And as you can see, I'm using the smaller torch because it's a smaller area here to solder. And it is a little bit tricky. It, it doesn't like to stick in there, so I have to try this quite a few times to get that to flow in there. And the other difficulty is here to make sure that the solder that I'm filling on the outside doesn't run inside and fill the gap of the pipe, the, the hole inside the pipe. It actually did do that for me at one point, so I had to drill that pipe out. So it, it can be really tricky. I've done this. The, the reason that I've used this pipe bender like this is because... Um, the first pipe bender, I wanted to keep the pipe straight. And the reason for that was because I, I thought putting in the wires first would be a better way of doing it. But of course, when you bend the pipe and then solder the pipe to the, to the base of the chandelier, the heat involved in that also scorches the wires inside the pipe. So although it can work, it can be okay there's no way of guaranteeing how much heat those wires will get and of course you don't want them to touch otherwise your your lights are not going to work so i decided the best way of doing it would be to bend the pipe first and then feed in the wire as you can see it's gone a little bit ski whiff here uh, but with a little bit of heat i can i can actually move that arm back into place Now, believe it or not, but I've actually dropped this on the floor several times already up to now, and it's dented and buckled some of those arms. So, it's it's not in great condition. But as you can see, just slightly gently heating up that solder allows you to move the arm where you need it to be. And you can see that the solder doesn't, doesn't disappear, it, it stays there. And once it cools, it's just set. It does set quite quickly, so be careful and be very, very careful because it's so tempting to pick this up or to move it by your finger and you really don't want to do that. Now, this is the first time I've actually done this kind of miniature pipe bending work. Um, in the past, the 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 soldering and pipe bending stuff that I've done is, is actually for larger things like full scale um, prototypes of, uh, for example, a, a rescue stretcher. Um, but the, the same technique applies to these smaller things. 
So as you can see, what I've done here is actually filled that hole with solder uh, by accident. So I'm using a little wire coated in flux to try and absorb some of that, that solder. So I'm heating it up. I'm adding some more solder to the outside of that, but I'm also making sure that that wire inside uh, prevents any, any more solder from filling up that hole, that tube. It's very fiddly work. And I've seen some of these on eBay. They look really nice, some of them. And I've seen them for about £30, which is probably about $50. Um, so it, it is possible to make these and sell them. I couldn't sell this one because the, the amount of time I put into it way far exceeds the, uh, <laughs> the price. Um, I'd probably have to charge about £700, which is ridiculous, isn't it? But of course, that is something that you can work on. You see, there's a process involved in these things. And just because this one-off had um, a lot of time and effort gone into it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be like that. Once you've figured out the process, once you've done one of them, you'll understand how how all these things fit together and you can compartmentalize each section each stage and you can actually become really efficient and mass produce these things it, it wouldn't take long to mass produce these things and of course a lot of these things are made by hand and sold anyway like that but as you can see the form of a chandelier is definitely forming. We can see that. We can see its its shape coming together there. Okay, so now that we've got to the point where we have finished the form, we've put this together. It's roughly the right shape, and it looks a little bit like a, a little chandelier. I think we've got to the stage where we can now move on to the next stage. So we've we've finished really with this part. And I think we can take it in a lot of different directions. We can finish it, polish it, shine it, and put some LEDs into it. But we're going to leave that for another episode. So if you enjoyed this video and you liked what you got from this, then like and subscribe. And as soon as I've made another episode in this series, you'll be notified straight away. So we, we are definitely going to continue and finish this. So we're going to make more videos about this particular build. So like and subscribe. I'll tell you when I've got another one ready. And we'll move forward and hopefully finish this to a really nice standard. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.